Hey everyone, this is a clip from a recent episode of Another Pass, where we talk about movies and all the struggles that go into making them. If you like it, check out the whole podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Yeah, I mean, I mean, like, yes, there are things where it was just at the time who was going to say more. I mean, it, one thing I found really interesting is that, so this is 1976, and the big thing that they're, like, the whole, it's an oil company, which I think is fucking brilliant. Oh, we'll yes. That. We'll talk more about that part in a second. But, like, they keep talking about the pressures of, like, an, an energy crisis or that America needs gas and so forth. And I one thing that was, that struck me was that, oh, wait, normally when we talk about, like, the 70s energy crisis stuff, we're talking about the Carter administration. But he's elected in 76. So, like, this is, this is still, this is showing that this was going on before that point. And that we've just sort of, we compartmentalize like elements of our history to like specific administrations artificially. And it was just interesting to note like, oh, these are the pressures that they're experiencing. You know, these points where American exceptionalism is starting to crack in a way that like can't really be overcome aside from becoming fully colonial. That's a really good point. I didn't even think about that. But like, I, I will fully agree. Like, I think it was brilliant of the movie to to kind of switch gears and focus on on like an oil crisis and, and 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 you know that being the the primary motivator for the expedition rather than just ah we go on adventures to right. mysterious islands yeah well i think it also updates it right because like in the early 1900s oh gosh can't believe i said that in the early 1900s <laughs> people were very much about exploring and and kind of like you know that was kind of that thing right oh they go on like you had newsreels about people going to foreign places and searching out new things and and the idea of it was very exciting. I mean, if you listen to any of those Superman like radio shows, right, it's very exciting when they go into like the deepest, darkest jungles. And yes, they do end up usually being pretty racist. So King Kong had that feeling to it. And so this updates that, right? Because why else would be we would be going somewhere this remote in a time where a lot of land has already been discovered and we have airplanes and people travel and travel is faster. Like why why would we be doing this? And oil is the perfect excuse for that. Searching out for resources. Yeah. In the the 1933 one, the one I accidentally started watching, they're only there to make a movie. And so it was it was a little flimsier. Like this, with it being like an oil company and just going to find oil, like they're just there to find something to exploit. So it makes a lot more sense. And they set it up really well by letting you know in, in those few, this is actually really great writing, in the few scenes on the ship, they let you know that this this the man who's leading this expedition, who's hired all these people, has basically put his job and his career and everything on the line, which is why when he makes the sudden switch to just kidnap Kong after he finds that he, this is not the oil he was looking for, it, it gives you the reason why he would automatically do that. Like, it's like, well, shit, I've got to save my ass. So, you know, it's not like, oh, we can just go home, darn, the oil's not ready yet. We'll come back in 20 years. Like, it's like, nope, no, no, no. I need something and I need something now. So they do a really good job in the beginning of the film kind of setting up that, like, this man is desperate enough that he has to do this because he really, this is an expensive trip and he pitched it. And if he doesn't come back with something, he's dead in the water. Yeah. Charles Gordon as the antagonist in this all, uh, uh, Fred Wilson from this ex or from this Exxon XP, uh, what is it called? Um, Petrox oil Petrox, company. Petrox, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, he's an amazing villain. Like, it's because, like you said, it's perfectly set up. Like, the we get, see, I mean, there's a little bit of that ham handed, like, like look at the battles we fought kind of thing, like a, yeah. a crewman says to him. And it's just like, that's a good idea. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. Very, very much being like, let's show every step of the thought process there. But it makes sense when he, he why he puts his, everything on the line, why they're going there in the first place. And like, how much is going into this all and then how much he needs to pivot to make some kind of like return on it all. Like it's a really good villain in that regard. I have almost no notes to fix his character or anything about the actual plot of this movie. Like the idea of going to this Island for it, for the oil is so great. And like the third act where it's like, it just turns into like this pageantry in order to sell the one thing that they found by accident when they were doing something else that was a flop. 
is is amazing. Like the the third act, I have almost nothing to say bad about. There's like two things I would change, and that's only to like add some themes that like from earlier in the movie. Like it's fucking awesome. Yeah, and I will I will say that I do love a villain who will bark orders from afar while getting a massage. Yes, so. yes. <laughs> and he brought the masseuse. <laughs> like I love that. He's just radioing people. It's like well. From the flare, it seems like we're this many kilometers away. So good luck with that. And then like, no, no, over to the right. Like, it's great. It's amazing. Like, those those are the kind of villains that I, I become apologists for. So watch out, everyone. <laughs> we love a villain with some panache. Remember, if you like that clip, check out the podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts.